70 inmates from the Kuje Medium Security Correctional Custodial Center in Kuje Abuja have received their freedom after being granted amnesty by the federal government. These form a fraction of about 2,600 inmates expected to be released across the country. The Minister of Interior, Rauf Aregbeshola, said those recommended for release were approved by President. President President Muhammadu Buhari in the light of the ongoing coronavirus pandemic and the need to decongest the nation's custodial centers. The process of coming up with the list of beneficiaries commenced in 2018 when sequel to Mr. President's approval, the Presidential Advisory Committee on Prerogative of Mercy, PACAPM, was inaugurated on the 28th day of August 2018 to advise the President in granting pardon, clemency to deserving inmates and ex-convict in line with the provisions of Section 175 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as amended. At the federal level, we have 41 inmates that are benefiting from the amnesty that the president has approved, 41. But in addition to these 41, the FCT, which is under the jurisdiction of the chief judge, is equally giving amnesty to 29 other inmates. So in total, 70 inmates will be given freedom today. <laughs> Two of these 70 inmates that will be given amnesty today have been granted pardon by the president. At this point, I'm pleased to inform you that five ex-convicts recommended for presidential pardon have been so pardoned by the president. <laughs> Two of them were eminent citizens of Nigeria at their time. They are, both of them are deceased. But they, they were eminent citizens of Nigeria. Courageous fighters for justice, democracy, and integrity of citizens. They are late Professor Ambrose Ali and late Chief Anthony Naolo. I mean the five that the President has pardoned are S. Lieutenant Colonel Mutisefion, Major E.J. Olarewaju, and Ajayi Olusola And now lawyer Barista Agu Imo is joining us via Skype to talk further on this matter. Good morning, Barista. Oh, 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 yes. Good morning. Good morning. Can you hear me loud and clear now? Yes, I can. All right, let's go straight to the matter. Is this good news, uh, the fact that prisoners have been told essentially to go and sin no more, if you like? On the one hand, yes, yeah. on the one hand, yes, it's good news uh, because the uh, justice uh, system uh, oftentimes is skewed against the um, the poor, so to say, and so for a number of reasons, uh, people end up spending more time and an inordinately longer time than they should ordinarily have spent. So you find out that a lot of the prisoners in prison there are awaiting trial. So any situation where prisoners are released or granted amnesty or granted whatsoever is on its own is a good thing. Yeah, so you said on one hand it's a good thing. So I'm waiting for, on the, how about the other hand? On the other hand, I mean, it's coming at this time when there's um, uncertainty, when there is... Uh, issues concerning um, the pandemic and so my question really is that um, 
where are they being released to and who are they being released to you know there is no rehabilitation process really in the nigerian um, uh, correctional system so lots of times prisoners who have been there for quite a while when they come out they don't really have anything to do they don't have anywhere to go so where are you releasing them to and that begs uh, the question which I'm about, about to ask you is, how about the protection of the citizen? You know, are we sure that even when these people are released, uh, there won't be a threat, so to speak, to society? How do we ascertain that? Well, the number of people who are in prison in Nigeria are just a very small percentage of the Nigerian population. So one could uh, make the point that, uh, that there are really more uh, criminals outside than those inside. So the ones who have been into prison, they shouldn't carry the stigma. People shouldn't expect that they're the most dangerous people in society. If there is a rehabilitation process, then people who go into prison will come out and be rehabilitated and reintegrated back into society. So I don't think that the few people who are going to be released, the 70 or 100 or 200 people are going to be any more danger to society than society already is. Now let's talk about uh, adjusting to everyday life for these uh, prisoners. Like you rightly put the questions, who are they going to be released to? Um, moving forward, what are they going to be doing? So uh, would, should we expect that they, they need some sort of assistance to first of all rein you know, reinstate them back to society? Yes, the process of, uh, of reintegration should be a continuous one so that when a person gets convicted and is in prison, from the point where he goes in, there should be a plan on how to reintegrate him into society. It's not something that is going to happen suddenly. There's no way that the government can deal, rehabilitate those people who are coming out today if nothing was put in place to make sure that they are going to be useful members of society. Yes, I do know that the prisons have some rehabilitation, I mean, some packages where people learn some skills, but it's, it's not sufficient. And uh, so a lot of work has to go into rehabilitation. And uh, in certain societies, they also have like halfway houses or re-entry re houses where people who come back out of prison are first of all put, and then they learn and they get used to coming back into society. Okay, but if that is not in place, then it's not something that is going to happen um, in, a, in, a, in, in one or two days. Marisa Agu, is this uh, act of amnesty at this time, is this, is this not merely an act of convenience to declutter prisons at a time when crowds are unsafe in terms of transmission of the virus? If we didn't have, what if we didn't have coronavirus? So I don't think it's, a, it's, it's very well thought out. Because the prisons, you'll be surprised, the prisons themselves are very well organized places. They may be overcrowding, which is true. Lots of the prisons have a lot more people than supposed to be. But the number of people, the visitors, are very well streamlined. So like this kind of virus that came in from um, outside the country and which is uh, trickling into society, you can very easily, if it is this virus that is a problem, curtail the number of people who are coming into the prison. Indeed, I do think that they may even in the very short term be a little safer there than outside when they don't have any control over where they are going to stay, who they are going to relate with, and, uh, and how the uh, pandemic is therefore going to move on. And a lot of them are going to be uh, released back into the ghetto. Like I said, most of the people in prison are poor. So they are going back into the ghetto where there are thousands of people crammed up in little spaces. But in the prisons themselves, the the, uh, the discipline and the organization of the prisons is actually very well done. Mm. So you can actually keep them and prevent uh, anything from happening to them while they're inside the prison. Mm. Thank you so very much, Barista Agu, for your thoughts there. And do have a great day and keep safe. Thank you very much.